Welcome back. I'm the Intense MD, a double board certified intensivist, here to give you an inside look into the intensive care unit. What better topic to talk about on Valentine's Day than broken heart syndrome? February is heart month, and I figured an appropriate topic for today given it's Valentine's Day, is broken heart syndrome. Broken heart syndrome, also known as Takotsubo cardiomyopathy, is a condition where emotional stress can cause the heart muscle to become weak. This can be caused by sudden shock, grief, and intense emotion. Some of the symptoms of broken heart syndrome are chest pain, heart palpitations, trouble breathing, fatigue, feeling weak, low blood pressure, and it may also lead to heart failure. This is typically triggered by an emotional event. Many times it is the death of a loved one. I have seen this happen in the hospital where somebody's spouse dies, and then that person starts having these symptoms. We send them to the emergency room and find out that they or taken to the cath lab and found to have this condition. This can affect people of any age, gender, or background, but it is more common in women than men. The typical patient for this is a woman over the age of 50, but again, this can affect anyone at any age. The risk of developing broken heart syndrome can increase with age. It's higher in patients with underlying heart disease. So how is this diagnosed? Taking the medical history, finding out the circumstances in which the symptoms started, taking the patient's medical history, seeing if they have any history of heart disease, looking at an EKG, an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart, which shows us how well the heart is pumping. And a patient can also be taken to the cath lab. Many times this does mimic a heart attack, so they'll look for blockages in the coronary arteries. If there's no blockages, that is suggestive that something else is going on. Sometimes they might do an LV gram. This is when they fill the left ventricle with dye and take a look at the function of the left ventricle. And this is how the condition got its name of Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. Cardiologists believe this looked like a Takotsubo, which is an octopus net or a basket in which they catch octopus or octopi, octopuses. That is how it received the name Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. Again, there are severe instances of this condition that can lead to heart failure because of the weakening of the heart muscle, and it is rare, but it can lead to death. The treatment of this condition usually involves rest, supportive care, so if there's any particular symptom that needs to be treated, if the patient has heart failure symptoms, we do treat for heart failure. If they have any abnormalities in their heart rhythm, then we will treat for the, the arrhythmia. And we have had patients in the intensive care unit with broken heart syndrome. Again, it is rare, but it is possible to have severe disease from this. This is typically reversible and gets better over time. And the patient should go back to their baseline cardiac function. Like I said, there are some severe cases where a patient is in the intensive care unit from severe heart failure, cardiogenic shock, and may even die, but I personally have never seen anyone die from this condition. They usually get better over the course of several days and are able to leave the hospital and live their life as they were before they came in. So obviously, this is a condition that might not have a great way to prevent it because it usually happens in a time of intense stress or shock and grieving, but the recommendation is to manage your stress in a day-to-day. -day. If you feel that you're at risk for this, if you're a person who has strong emotional reactions, then managing your stress may reduce your risk of this occurring. Again, if you or someone you know are experiencing these symptoms, it's important to seek medical attention a lot of times when this is occurring in the process of grief, sometimes people just chalk it up to grieving, but it is important to know that if you have heart attack-like symptoms, you do need to seek medical attention just to make sure that everything's okay. Thank you for watching this quick video. If you have any questions about broken heart syndrome, please leave them below. 
I hope you're enjoying Heart Month so far. We have at least two more videos coming out in the upcoming weeks. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to hear more about the intensive care unit and health information in general. I'll see you next week.